Joining us live right now is Congressman Brian Bilbray to explain more about the problem and the letter that he sent off. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Congressman. How are you? Hey, John. Great to be with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being on America's Morning News. And, sir, as Melanie mentioned, you represent the 50th District of California, which is, uh, if memory serves correct, just above San Diego. First, bring us up to date on what the immigration situation is like on the border of Mexico and California, sir. Yeah, you're right, John. That's where the where the 50th district is. I actually grew up right on the border. Actually, two houses uh, divided my home from the border area. So wow, watch this issue grow up. And um, it is just in a time when the word is getting around the world that America doesn't want you to come here illegally. They want you to play by the rules. Just when the uh, situation is where illegals are not only not coming but they're going home. Now we've got Congress waving the white flag and actually uh, putting the uh, um, welcome mat out for people to break our, our laws again and uh, in two forms. First, you've got um, Gutierrez from Chicago, somebody who um, obviously is not don't understand the cost of illegal immigration on the border, but um, um, talking about giving a new amnesty program. And we've also got um, the new so-called health plan that, um, does not require that we use our save verification to make sure that whoever gets in the system is legally in the country. So they really don't think it's a big deal to reward illegals with health care or with amnesty. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of people who are, are, are deeply concerned about illegal immigration and, and the issue currently that's, um, it, well, there's been any number of demonstrations in Washington, D.C. over the years. I remember meeting you at um, Hold Their Feet to the Fire. Uh, People are talking about it, of course, in California and all the other border states. But health care just seems to be the one area in which Nancy Pelosi and and the Democrats are determined um, to proceed forward. They're determined because the Open Border Pro-Illegal Immigration Caucus has basically lobbied and said, look, if illegals don't have access to the system, if you check... We will not vote for it, and she needs that liberal vote. So she's literally willing to sell out the rule of law, the concept of or the fairness of not rewarding people who broke the law while those wait patiently to play by the rules. She's willing to sell that out because there is a block of, of liberals who say we will not vote for it if it doesn't guarantee access to illegals into the system. How many illegals are we talking about? Well, we're talking a minimum of 12 to 15. I mean, you got to understand. Million. And they use, yeah, is that are, that are uh, in the system. Um, you know, that's self-declared, and it could be up to 20. The fact is the president, to remember, went from 47 million insurers, and then when he gave a speech before Congress, he said 30. So it appears that the president thinks there's 17 million out there, because when he said no illegals will gain access, he dropped the number 17 million from the 47 down to the to the 30 million. Congressman, before we jump to the health care debate, I want to ask you, what is the situation like along the border now with regard to the escalation in the drug wars? And, and they're saying more and more that it's crossing over into America. Have you seen an increase in the violence? John, we've seen um, that the battle is raging on the Mexican border. And i got to say one thing. The people in Mexico, northern Mexico, are paying a high cost to fight this border war. So I've got to and with all our complaints about Calderon on immigration, he realizes that he has nothing he can do but um, wage war on these drug cartels if he wants to um, save his national sovereignty. We are seeing people with, we're seeing heads decapitated. We had one father walk in with two fingers into one of our hospitals, wrapped up in a gauze because his uh, daughters had been kidnapped, and he wanted to know if he could um, save the fingers and get them reattached after he got his girls back. Oh, That's happening goodness. on American soil. And um, this is why we've, we've got to understand that these cartels, um, uh, John, are not just drug smuggling cartels. They smuggle um, guns and illegals north. They are alien smuggling, too. These are just smuggling cartels. They mm-hmm. send guns and money south. And the lack of control, not only in our borders, but in our neighborhoods, are feeding these monsters that are creating these kind of things. And and there's I've seen photos, I've been briefed by the local law enforcement and the FBI, and the atrocities are things that 
you literally could not show on American television. Unbelievable. You know, and, and I've got to say this, that I was at a uh, airport security line, Congressman, and they made a big deal about not letting a father on an airplane because he had one of those snow globes that he bought for his daughter that he wanted to bring home as a Christmas gift, and they took it from him. And here you've got everything going on along the border, and nobody seems to care, but you can't take a snow globe on an airplane. I have a quick question for you before we have to go, Congressman. Uh, the Lockerbie bomber has disappeared in Libya. He was released on uh, compassionate grounds, very controversial, earlier this summer. And now he appears to have gone missing in Libya after outliving the doctor's prescriptions that he should have been dead by now. What do you think about that? I think Scotland should be paid for their decision. And the fact is, um, look, Scotland got um, its autonomy from England. With that um, right comes a responsibility. And it appears that Scotland is sold out for an oil deal. And I think we should hold them accountable. They may have been friends for a long time. But friends have got to get in a friend's face and tell them when they're wrong. I think it was a mistake we made in Congress not telling Bush when we thought they were making a mistake. But these guys have made a dreadful mistake that they should be held accountable for. Scotland has made a decision to cut deals with terrorists. And we ought to be in their face more than we would somebody who was our enemy. All right, Congressman Brian Bilbray, the Republican from Southern California. Thank you, sir, for being on America's Morning News. Still coming up. Thank you so much. 